Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 12 of the video series where I'm building this guy right here. And I think it's really looking cool. It's an offset body, uh, body design based on the Fender Meteora. But I got two humbuckers, uh, two tones, volume, uh, three-way blade switch. I did a cool uh, zero coat inlay into some black cherry. And uh, did a set neck. Got some tapered, uh, tapered uh, stripes going up the back of the neck, and I got a zero coat fretboard. I think it's looking really cool. I'm, I'm really digging this guitar. Anyway, this, uh, for the most part, this series has about uh, been about CNC guitar building, and I'm very new to all this. I've built a couple now, and and I'm just kind of taking you all on my journey, uh, uh, learning. And, uh, and we're going to get back on the CNC work today. We've been working on the neck, and the last uh, uh, video we did was a hand carve in the neck, which I love to do. And it came out really cool. And this one we're going to get back on the body. And we're going to do some body contouring. Now, I don't have a 3D uh, software for my, uh, for my design software or my uh, uh, G-code software. But I've learned how to use V-Carve to do what they call sweep profiles to get some of these body contours, like my arm contour, my belly cut in the back, and a neck cut over here. So... Uh, anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I figured out how to do that. We're going to do it on this body and hopefully it comes out good. Anyway, let me get the camera turned down and show you uh, the jigs i got to make uh, to hold this body in place. Okay, so uh, in this video we've got to do some more work on this body on the CNC machine. And the tricky thing is going to be is to get this body back onto the CNC machine where it's in perfect alignment both in the Y axis and the X axis. Not only to do it uh, lined up perfectly with the face up, I want to be able to flip it over and have it exactly in that same spot again so the operations I do from the front and the back, they, they align properly with each other. So uh, what I'm going to do for that is I've got these two pieces of MDF right here, and these are going to make up my jig. One's a little bit bigger than the other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set this on the CNC machine of course, align it along my fence, which is going to align this with the X and Y axis nicely. And I'm going to cut the profile, the outside profile of this body. I'm going to cut on the inside of the line. So the hole I have in this upper piece of MDF is going to be the shape of the outside of this body. And of course, I'm going to cut that all the way through this piece of MDF. And in addition to that, I'm going to drill in four 3 8 dowels. I'm going to go right through the top piece and probably halfway into the lower piece. And I'm going to insert dowels into all four of those holes, and they're going to stick out on both sides. So if I want to uh, machine, uh, do any machine work on the top, I'll have the right this side facing up. And if I want to pop it off, I can flip it over and put it back down with the dowels. And that'll be the same hole, only flipped over the other way. And I'm also going to do two alignment holes for depending on whether or not I'm working from the top down or the bottom up, I should be able to set the CNC machine uh, using a quarter inch bit into either one of these alignment holes and that should line the thing up and I should have an accurate cut um, whether it's on the uh, coming from the top or the bottom. So anyway that probably wasn't a great explanation but I think once we get over there to the CNC machine and start cutting these operations out uh, it'll probably make a little bit more sense. So anyway let's go on over there and get rolling with this. Okay, so just a quick visual over here in, in uh, Vetric V-Carve. So here I've got this, this pink uh, rectangle. That's my piece I'm working on now. I made it an inch, uh, two inches wider and two inches longer than the body blank itself, which is this guy right here. And if you'll look down in this lower left-hand corner, I have a quarter-inch hole right here. And that is exactly centered on the XY0. So my reference point for, the, for all the work on this body blank is from the sear XY0. And what I did, I did a corresponding quarter-inch hole on the other corner of, this, uh, of the body blank. So exactly 14 inches over and remaining on the 0X uh, plane. Um, or sorry, zero on the Y plane. I moved it over 14 inches, which is the width of the body blank. So when I flip this guy, like so, that hole that was there is now over here and vice versa. So um, anyway, that's how this thing is going to stay in alignment in, in both directions. Then I have these four pins here, and these are my 3 8 dowels that I'm going to use to dowel my uh, the piece I could remove and flip over from the base, and it should keep everything in perfect alignment. Uh, 
So anyway, so if I was to run these two uh, toolpaths here, let's see, let's go preview visible toolpath. Let's go to the 3D view. You can see here that in the corner of course is only catching half of it because I've got them centered. I've got my four alignment pins there and I've got my two uh, XY datums here. So I think this ought to work good. So let's go ahead and run it and see how it goes. So here's, a, here's another spot where I really like to use that fence. Um, it's just a positive spot to push a piece up against and you get a uh, good, you lock it up against that, you know you're running dead accurate on that uh, Y axis. So now the first, the, the first time I'm gonna drill these holes or the only time I'm gonna drill these holes, I will set up and I'll align my uh, gantry on the XY, which I have a mark on the, on the piece of MDF. I'll line that with a very sharp uh, 30 degree bit to get me right exactly where I wanna go. Then after this, once those holes are drilled and I always go back and use those holes to set up the XY, each time I use this fixture, uh, then the whole thing ought to come out just right each time. So first I drilled the holes and I swapped out, I put in that quarter inch bit, now I'm cutting the, you know, the profile cut, which goes all the way through the board. And right about here I realized I didn't have little tabs to hold that piece in there, so I quickly slapped in a couple of screws to hold that thing down before it finished cutting, and I made it just in time. Okay, so the next thing we want to do now that we've got our fixture uh, made up, we want to get these contours cut on this thing. Now, Vetric V-Carve, this is not Aspire. Aspire is their 3D version. Uh, this is just their desktop model uh, of, the, of the software. And I can't really do 3D work, but it will let me do something called a sweep profile, which is what we're going to do here. It's under the molding tool path, which is over here. So what I had to do is first I drew this line, which is the the uh, inner edge of my um, arm, my forearm cut. So I wanted to taper from this line down to the outside of the guitar, uh, right along this pink line right here. And the way you do that is is you you have to determine a uh, your your rail. So this is the first spot. I want I want the cut to follow this line, and I want it to go out in this direction, and I want it to be basically at this angle. So I drew a rectangle here that is the width of this, which I think in this case is two inches. I could check right here real quick. Yeah, so that's two inches wide and that's three quarters of an inch tall. That's how much I wanted to, that's how, how deep of a cut I wanted to make on this end here. You tell the software that those are the two points you want to use. Okay, so here is basically the tool path as I as I laid it out. It's uh, the molding tool path, and like I said, first you have to uh, select the drive rails, which is this line right here, and this is the angle right here. And of course, this height of this or that the the pitch of that line tells it how deep it's going to cut. So it's going to cut three quarters of an inch, which you can see that over here. And it tells the bit I'm going to use is a quarter inch ball nose end mill, and uh, and then once I hit uh, calculate down here, it'll run the toolpath. Oh, and let me point out too that it's showing that the cuts are going in this direction. So every every cut is going to be uh, two inches wide. All right. So obviously I don't need it uh, to cut two inches wide here, but in this case you have no choice. That's what you have to do. So I just picked the widest spot, made my box that wide, and I told it to, the whole thing to cut. So let's go calculate. All right, and this is basically what the tool path is going to look like. So that's a lot of lines. That's a lot of passes back and forth. That's a quarter inch bit, and I think there's an eight percent overlap. So each time it moves over eight percent, the bit, the width of the bit, and uh, and it's going to come out with this shape right here. 
So here's the shape, and I think that looks great. I think that's uh, just what I'm looking for. It's a little wasted time because um, it's cutting out here in the middle of nowhere, but but that's okay. So while we're at it, let me go ahead and flip this guy over and show you the uh, contours on the backside we're going to do. So here on the backside, and we've got the same thing. Here's my uh, here's my the pitch of my cut, and that's going to be for the uh, belly carve here, which this line here is the belly carve. Let me see if I can pull that up down here. Okay, see it, it highlighted when I clicked on it in my toolpath list, it highlighted that line and that line. So there's the edge of the cut and there is the, uh, the angle I'm going at. And the other one I've got, this is the taper, the top of the neck, I've called the neck access contour. And see those two lines are lit up there too. So if we're going to run these two guys, that's what the toolpaths will look like. And then let's go a preview visible toolpaths. Let's switch over to the 3D view, and that's what those guys look like there. So in order to for this to look uh, to look really cool for you, let me go back to the 2D view. I'm going to flip this guy. We're going to go ahead and run the perimeter cut, okay? And let's see how all this looks together. All right, let's flip over to the 3D view. There it is cut out. Let's get rid of that excess waste. So there's what it looks like on the top. There's my arm cut on the edge. And then if I flip this guy over, we can see what it looks like on the back. And here's the way my two cuts look on the back. And I think that looks great. And I could check, I, I even did the uh, neck pocket so I could see what kind of remaining material I have here. And I think that looks good too. So I think that looks pretty cool. I'm ready to run this and, uh, and see what happens. So that is a quarter inch ball nose end mill. And uh, it's set, uh, the settings for that bit is uh, as far as the step over goes. In other words, how far does it move before it cuts another path? I think it's set on 8%. So it's only moving over about 8% of the width of the bit um, at each pass. So it makes many, many passes here. But I tell you what, it sure comes out smooth. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to sand it, but it's incredible just how nice that that'll cut it. It does take a while though. This operation here probably took uh, 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, so while it was running, I went ahead and I cut the aluminum, uh, 3 8 aluminum rods that I'm gonna use for that fixture. Uh, when, I, when I popped that apart, I'm gonna go ahead and put those rods back in so I could flip the board over on it. So I took that time to jump over here and make those parts. Well, that came out really nice. I'm pleased as could be with that. Of course, I've got to sand it, but that's just very minor, fine lines in that thing. Let me lift it out of there. Very cool. I think that looks all right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drive those pins in the, uh, the base of that fixture. And I'm using a little uh, thin CA glue to glue them in. And uh, now uh, when I drive that, uh, that upper piece on place, whether it's right side up or upside down, I mean it fits just tight as could be and it works like a champ. Now whenever I line it up, I just go back to that um, XY hole and I drop the bit down in there and I know I have perfect alignment. Okay, so I think that came out looking really cool. Uh, I, I mean, it went exactly how I'd hoped it to go, which is always a good thing. So I've got that nice bevel there. If you remember, I took off uh, three quarters of an inch coming down at an angle, and I think it's a nice, I think it fit my arm really well. And I did my uh, belly cut in the back. Now I just sanded this one a little bit too to see how the, I can make that contour to where these, uh, these veneer lines I put in there kind of whip in and back out of that. I think that looks pretty cool. And, uh, and we got the, uh, the relief uh, cut up here for the back of the, heck, uh, back of the neck, too, for the palm of your hand. So I think it's coming out really cool. So uh, uh, I'm going to have a bunch of sanding to do on this thing. But before I do that, I still have one more thing I want to do. I need to go ahead and take my router, and i got a quarter-inch roundover bit in it. 
Now I'm going to run around the rest of the perimeter of this body and then uh, take off and do a bunch of sanding with 80 grit and start working my way up the grit. So. Okay, so as I was routering that, which, which came out fine, by the way, I remember there's one other thing. And if y'all remember when we were doing this neck pocket, I did this little ledge right in here, and I hope you could see that. That ledge on both sides here, it follows the, the bottom of the neck pocket. So it's on a three degree angle with the rest of the body. And I only did a little ledge here, so I knew where to cut the rest of this too. Now, I don't want this whole thing to go diving off on the upper end here. Well, let's say I, I want to blend it in by hand. So I'm going to use my chisels right now, and I'm going to start working this area down right in through here and right in through here to get, these, uh, to get this body down to where it's going to be running parallel with the underside of the fretboard right there. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to work on that right now. So I've got a really nice reveal there. Now that I got that sanded down, I just blended it back. I think it looks good. The height of it, it's not still exactly right. I'm going to have to, uh, before I set the neck, we'll put the bridge in place and we'll get this height. We, I think we're going to have to trim that uh, back of the neck back a little bit. But I think as far as it lining up with the body, I think that looks great. Well, guys, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, I'm really digging that, that sweep profile that you could do uh, on, that, uh, on the CNC machine. I think that's really great. It works absolutely perfect for these, these type of contouring of a body like this. Anyway, uh, I'm really digging it. I think it's looking great. Uh, I've got a bunch of sanding to do, so I'm set back up over here at my little vacuum table uh, where I can sand away without kicking up too much dust. But uh, I hope somebody got a little something out of it. I'm enjoying the heck out of doing this. And if y'all come on back next week, we're going to carry on in this guitar right here. So uh, anyway, in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.